Well, and, and Deb, you probably have some tales of woe. <laughs> so anybody who's worked on more than a half a movie has a tale of woe. Don't we all? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, all on the same, we're all on the same boat, aren't we? Uh, I'll start with my very first experience, just pitching. Um, the very first time I pitched was a complete nightmare. I went to um, a, the fade-in conference at Paramount, and what they do is they, they talk to you all day long about how to write a screenplay and how to pitch a screenplay. And then that night they turn you loose at a party called a networking party. And it's, it's vicious because you have a whole bunch of writers and maybe a small handful of producers in that same room. And so everybody's you know, wheeling around trying to find those producers. Um, and at one point, I, I just remember meeting writer after writer after writer. And so I took a break. I went to the, uh, they had a big spread with a, I don't know, they had this big butter sculpture of a swan and a bunch of little goldfish crackers around it. I don't know, it was LA. But they, I, I started eating these little goldfish crackers. And you know how when you eat goldfish crackers that you get all that stuff in your gums? I was talking to this other guy beside me who was also kind of eating the same crackers and I thought he was another writer. So we just started chatting and he's like, oh. He said, well, what do you have? Why don't, why don't you give me a pitch? I said, oh, are you, are you a producer? And he said, well, yeah. He's like, well, tell me what you have. So I started to speak, and I had this whole mouthful of this mushy goldfish cracker stuff. But on top of that, uh, you see my nails? I don't have any. My mom said, please, for the love of Pete, she said, please look nice. Please wear a dress, and please make us proud here in, in Ohio. And so she talked me to wearing these things called Lee Press-On Nails. And so during the pitch, on top of the, the gum full of you know, goldfish crackers, which we both had, I went like this to my hair. And my, my nail got stuck, this press on nail. I couldn't pull it out for the life of me. It just stuck there. And so I talked to him, tried to finish my pitch, and then I just yanked it really hard. And I looked down, and my, the nail was gone. And so I, the rest of my pitch, I just started to talk to him like this, and I couldn't find that little bastard. And then I, <laughs> as soon as I was done, I ran into the ladies' room, and I'm like, where is that? Where is that? And there it was, this not one but two big, uh, they were coral-colored long nails right there in my hair. The guy took my pitch, I think out of, um, I think he felt sorry for me. <laughs> <laughs> but I will tell you, he hated the first, I pitched five things. And before I finished those first five pitches, he, he cut me off. He said, I don't like that. What else do you have? I had a second one. He's like, I don't like that. What else do you have? And on that, that actually it was my sixth pitch. He took that sixth thing and. Uh, what happened to it? Um, he optioned it. It didn't go anywhere. And that was the one that I'm producing now because that script has gone, it has legs. It went through, um, one, two, three, four. It went through four options with people. Um, but the last option I had, um, this is my other horror story, if I may. Um, I, I met a woman who called me up. She actually said, um, I heard about this, this swing era musical thing that you're doing, that you wrote. She said, can I read it? So I sent it to her and she called back and she said, I'd like to produce this. And just, I was kind of flippant, and I said, yeah, you and me both, sister. And she took me literally, and she said, well, why don't we produce it together? I'm like, okay. You know, I'm on the phone thinking, what just happened? That's uh, so unusual. But um, we ended up signing contracts, and we became producers together on it. She's out in LA, and I'm here. So we had to do the you know, fly back and forth. We did a table reading with actors, um, and we had a director attached to it. But there was never any money, and the director who came on board wanted rewrites, no problem. I rewrote for him. For two years, I rewrote for this man. I could not appease him in any way. Did you, did you get paid for any I of these rewrites? Not. I did uh -huh. not. I did not. Get that in point, your contract. I, I said to myself, wait a minute, I'm a producer on this thing too, and I have a say. But you know, he was in a different place. This director was going through a divorce, so he didn't want to hear anything that any woman had to say. So it was a kind of a volatile situation. But eventually that contract ran out. They wanted to renew it again. And when they did, I said, let me take it home and read it. Let me fly back to Ohio, I'll read it on the plane. And they said, it's the same thing you've been signing for the past two years, just sign it. And I said, no, you know, pl please respect me when I say I'd like to read this contract. Um, and, they, and they didn't like it. So as they, as they walked out of the, um, the diner, they actually came on one side of me, each side of me, um, the producer and the director. They walked me to their van. They opened up the back of the door. And I thought, 
are they going to push me in? And, and I didn't know what was happening, but they actually physically put me back by the van, opened the doors, and they put a pen in my hand and the paper in front of me, and they said, just sign right here, sign right here, and if you don't sign right here, you're going to get a bad reputation in this town for being somebody who is not easy to work with. And that scared the, the daylights out of me. I'm like, okay, I'm signing. So I signed again for another, it was 18 months, and I was stuck with the situation. Nothing happened with it. They could never put money to it. Um, and we just had so many creative differences with it. And, I, you know, one of the big things for me was they wanted to attach a 51-year-old actor to play a 30-year-old, and then they wanted to attach a 30-year-old to play an 18-year-old. Now, granted, I met both of these actors. Both of those actors are very young-looking. But if I don't buy it, I'm not going to ask anybody in an audience to buy it, you know? I mean, I want, I want it to be cast well. I mean, it's, you know, wouldn't you? It's your thing that you wrote. So, um, you know, we had these differences. I'm probably going to get a reputation now for being hard to work with, but I'm not. I, I actually gave him what he wanted for two years. He kept switching. Well, let's try this screenplay. Let's try it this way now. Let's try it this way. And I'm like, do you know what you want? <laughs> I don't think he knew what he wanted. Yeah. 